Hi, I'm not actually going to do the talk this morning. I'm going to let somebody else do it for me. Well, at least I'm going to read out of a book written by somebody called Jill Briscoe. She's probably in her 80s now and now lives in America, but she was uh, born in England. And I think she and her husband, Stuart, were probably contemporaries with Sue and Doug Barnett back in the day. And she's written this book, which I read a few years ago, called God's Front Door. Now, what it really is, it's like her sitting, I think, in America, you know, they all have these big porches, don't they? And I think she sort of sits on her porch and has time with God. And these are like allegories of, of her times with God. So she talks about the front door and going to the front door. And that's really meaning her going to God and, and having time with him. So I'm just going to read it to you. And it's called The Broken Wing. She starts off by quoting Isaiah 40, verse 11. He tends his shop, his flock, like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Has someone hurt you, rejected you, slandered you? Have you ever had an ache that won't go away? Where do you go to find help? Go to the front door, you won't be disappointed. I hadn't noticed him sitting there in the shade with a lamb in his arms. I went over to him and sat down. Talk to me, he said. I'm hurt, I answered, so hurt. I know, he said. When will it stop hurting? When you walk in the front door, he said. Your front door, I asked. Mine, he said very quietly. Talk to me about the pain. It was then that I saw the lamb in his arms. I hadn't noticed the creature had broken its leg. It looked quite bedraggled, limp and exhausted. I had to wait until he was spent and at the point of death, the lamb maker explained. He'd got himself up on a dangerous ledge and every time I approached him, he got agitated and nearly fell off. I had to wait until all his strength was gone. Then I knew he wouldn't struggle anymore and I could rescue him. Maybe he didn't know it was you, I suggested. He knew, he responded. He put the lamb down in the long grass to rest. I hadn't noticed the bird in his lap. It had a broken wing. There are so many things that are broken in this world, I said. The bird maker took hold of the little creature and it fluttered and squawked and tried to escape. She'll have to lie still if she wants me to mend her, he said. How silly the bird is, I murmured. He just looked at me, just once. Then I knew I'd been silly too. If I lie still in your hands and stop squawking, will you heal my broken wing? I whispered, not daring to look at him. There was silence. Then, will you lie still in my hands, whether I heal you or not? He asked me very gently. I'll try to, I said after a long pause. Then, come here, little girl, he said. And I don't know how it happened, but I was in his arms feeling the beat of his broken heart. I understood at last. Only someone with a broken heart would want to mend broken legs and wings. He'd had his heart broken so mine could be mended. And suddenly it didn't matter anymore about my wing. Lying there, I knew that there was nowhere else I'd rather be in the whole world than in his hands. In fact, it occurred to me that if my wing was mended, I'd fly away. Whatever would I do without his hands on my life? I wasn't sure I wanted that. It doesn't matter, dear heart maker, I said. You decide. Then I saw him smile and suddenly I was as content with the hurt as without it. The sun went down on the day and night came. I slept. He didn't. But then he who keeps Israel never does. 
and this is the prayer. Lord, when I'm hurting, it's so hard to talk to you. Like a bird with a broken wing, I fight and squawk. Help me to remember that what's happening to me is no surprise to you. Help me to believe you are the mender of everything. May I lie still in your hands till my spirit is healthy and whole and bring me to the point of leaving the healing to you in your time, in your way. You decide. Amen. <laughs>